Okay, now I want to cover a game between Rubinstein and Morotsky. Um, played in uh, Gothenburg, 1920. It's in the uh, Queen's Gambit Decline Orthodox Defense ECO code D63. The game started off by uh, D4, Knight F6. So normally you'd, uh, we get a game of like the Nimzo Indian or the Queen's Indian Defense out of uh, this type of opening, but it will transpose into a Queen's Gambit Declined. Uh, white plays knight f3. Gee, we could even see something like a Kali system or a Tory attack still, but uh, then black plays d5. White plays c4. Um, black plays e6. And then white plays bishop to uh, g5. And then bishop e7. Um, white plays e3. And then uh, black plays knight on b to d7. You know, it looks, it looks like a queen's gambit decline. The only thing that's missing is the knight to c3, which is what we get on white's sixth move. So we have actually reached the uh, queen's gambit decline position uh, by transposition. And then uh, black, pla uh, black castles. Um, obviously, maybe I should say in the queen's gambit, just backing up a move, queen's gambit decline orthodox defense. It's a pretty solid defense by black, even though it's known to be cramped. And um, white has, uh, will generally have better central control. And uh, black's idea is to exchange pieces to get rid of the cramped position. So black castles before starting any of the exchanging and opening of the files. White plays rook to c1. Uh, usually in the queen's gambit games, the uh, queen or even queen pawn games, this c file becomes very critical. So it's going to put a rook there because it looks like these two pawns are going to be exchanged off or give white the half open file. And um, you know, uh, uh, black wants to play um, e5 or c5 to free its game, and it needs to. Its problem will be developing this bishop here on c8. So now black plays, uh, will play rook to e8, uh, but uh, the question is, gee, why didn't black play right away uh, a very tempting move? Looks like c5. So let's, I'll show you what happens if you play c5. Black plays c5, then white will play d takes c5, the knight takes, and then uh, c will take C will take d5, knight will take d5, knight takes knight, pawn recaptures. Um, then white will play this move, rook takes uh, c5. Obviously the bishop cannot recapture because uh, it's it would expose an attack against the queen. So black would play bishop takes g5 and then um, white will win the pawn by playing rook takes d5. The queen probably goes to f6. And then white will win the, the bishop by playing knight takes g5. So white will be up uh, a, a bishop and a pawn. Or a knight and a pawn, I'm sorry. So let's just back up. So instead, um, black plays rook to e8. Probably bringing it, um, you know, this way it actually gives a square for the bishop or the knight to move if it really wanted to, but it brings the rook to the center where hopefully we'll participate in the future. White plays queen to c2, putting the queen on the c file. And also we've seen this, uh, also it looks along this diagonal here, <clears throat> especially looking over the square e4 or would like to push its pawn. And now um, probably black jumps the gun a little bit and it plays d takes c4. Normally um, black delays that move until um, white has played bishop to d3. That way it forces the bishop to make another move. Probably in this position the best move would have been something like uh, c6. Okay, but um, black plays d takes c4. The 
the ship takes, obviously. So it captures the pawn without loss of time. And now black plays c5 before it doesn't have time to. We've seen plenty of games where black doesn't get in the move c5 and it's punished severely and usually loses the game. So um, c5 is a counterattack in the center. Um, white castles. And then um, black will take the pawn. And then the question is, how should uh, white recapture? Well, the options are the pawn or the knight. Um, if white takes with the if white takes with the pawn, then it's going to leave itself with an with an isolated pawn. But with the pawn on uh, d4, it will control the squares e5 and c5, which are beneficial. And it also could then uh, these two squares could help. Uh, lead to an attack for white, but uh, the drawbacks are it is an isolated pawn that uh, black could attack. So if the knight takes, um, the knight is centralized, um, but the pawn structure well, it will be the same um, for both sides. So you know uh, white would love to have the, this pawn on this square. And that would actually be a more favorable pawn position for white. So uh, white decides to take with the knight, um, I guess going for um, a slight, I guess it, it just weighed the benefits of the isolated pawn versus um, having a similar pawn structure. And then uh, black played a6. Looks like the move is to, uh, you know, white had a firm control of this b5 square, and it's uh, just preventing any of the knights from jumping in here. Um, maybe it's also preparing something like uh, uh, b5 followed by the bishop to b7. Now, white plays rook on f to d1, and look at white. White is fully developed. It has its rooks on the two open files, and black is looks like it's uh, you know it needs to get its pieces out and connect its rooks. So uh, you can tell that white is ahead in development. So once again, uh, you know, but it doesn't have any real pawn weaknesses. So it's just basically needs to get its pieces out. Would we'll love to exchange a few, and it would probably have a good game. So that's what black tries to do. In the next few moves, it looks like uh, black uh, equalizes. So it starts off by playing queen to a5. And the real purpose of this move is that, you know, it's probably freeing up a spot on the back row, but uh, in getting developing his queen, but it's also attacking the bishop here on uh, g5. So white um, plays bishop to h4, keeping the attack here uh, along this diagonal. So, um, and then black plays knight to e5, hitting the bishop here. So it will retreat the bishop to e2. Now I guess retreating it to uh, b3, it just if it if it did that, it would just look along this diagonal here, and it sort of is uh, with since this pawn is here at e6, it's just sort of like pounding a wall right now. So it it, it retreats it to a, uh, you know, probably, you know, a still beneficial diagonal. The knight comes to g6, hitting the bishop on h4 again, and the, and the bishop goes to g3. It's forced to go to a different diagonal. But the good news is it does overlook, uh, the bishop now does look at these squares right here. So black plays e5. So it looks like black is really getting rolling now. Um, e5, um, hitting the knight, freeing the bishop. So the knight is forced to move. Um, the, the, the downside of playing um, e5 is that it no longer controls this square right here, which we'll see that uh, white will use in its attack. It's going to gang up against the, it's going to
basically say I'm going to use now uh, D5 as the launching point of my attack. We'll see many pieces jump into E5, uh, or D5, I'm sorry, in the future by white. The knight comes to uh, B3 attacking the queen, and I have to continue this game on the next video.